Now that you've gotten comfortable finding the areas under the standard normal curve, we are ready to find areas under any normal curve. And that's what we're going to do, find normal probabilities for various applications. To find normal probabilities, we will do three steps. First, always draw a picture. Then convert our values to z-scores so we can calculate our probabilities, either from a table or from some type of software such as Excel. So if the average American male height is said to have be normally distributed with a mean of 69.1 inches and a standard deviation of 2.9 inches, what is the probability a randomly selected person will be taller than 6 feet 2 inches? Well, let's draw a picture to get an idea of what we're talking about. Here's our standard normal curve. The mean is right in the center. Actually, let's just make this an any normal curve. We'll put x values here on the top row. The mean of 69.1, we're interested in 74 inches, which is off to the right. And we want to be taller than 74 inches. So this tells us that we are even further off to the right than that. We want the area in that right tail. Now that we have a picture and we know what we're looking for, we're going to convert all these x's to z values. The mean always has a z value of 0. And then to calculate the z value of the 74, we use our z-score formula, where we take the value we're interested in minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So in our case, 74 minus 69.1 divided by a standard deviation of 2.9. Now, as usual, I'll recommend that you do the z calculation on your calculator in two steps. 74 minus 69.1 equals, gives me 4.9, divided by 2.9 gives me 1.69. Let's round it to two digits, 1.69. From here, I can go to Excel to calculate what 1.69 gives me for an area. If z is equal to 1.69, we can type in equals norm dot s for standard dot distribution and use that 1.69 for our z, and we always say true. And I find that's going to give me an area of 0.9545. So 0.9545 is the area we're talking about. But remember, that area is always the area to the left, and we want the area, shaded area, to the right. Well, that's just the complement. So we'll take 1 minus 0 0.9545. When we subtract, we get 0 0.0455. And so we have our final probability, that shaded area, the probability a random person is taller than 6 feet 2 inches is only 4.5% or so. That's a pretty unusual finding to find someone taller than 6.2 in a random selection. We can also go the other way. We can find the value that corresponds with a given probability. The, ta the book describes a way to use the table to find this inverse operation, but we're going to do it on Excel because I think it's a lot more straightforward. In Excel, we'll hit norm equals norm dot s dot, and instead of distribution, we're going to write inv for inverse, meaning we're going backwards. We have the probability, we want the value. So norm dot s dot inverse, open a parenthesis and type in the probability that we want. That probability needs to be the probability to the left of our value. So sometimes we'll have to subtract from one to make sure we put the correct value in there. And then we'll use our picture to kind of build this answer. Once we have our z value, we can quickly convert that z value into an x value, which has context in our situation, by using our formula that the x value is the number of standard deviations times the standard deviation plus the mean. So for example, a video game company finds the mean life of their computer game package is about 30 months with a standard deviation of 4 months. They want to put a guarantee on their video game package, but they don't want the guarantee period to be too long or too short. They want it to be of value to their customers, but not cost them too much money. And so they decide they want to pay out on 7% of their packages. How long should their guarantee be? 
always start by drawing a picture. So here's our normal curve. The mean in the middle is 30. And we want the guarantee period to be 7%. These are X's, by the way. We want the guarantee period to be 7%. That's less than half the shaded area down here. 0 0.07 is the area or the probability we pay out on that guarantee. We need to know what x value goes with 0 0.07. We want a probability that's equal to 0 0.07, so we'll say equals norm dot s dot inv for inverse. And that allows us to type in the probability of 0 0.07 and then they'll give me a z value of negative 1.48. Let's round to two digits, negative 1.48. So we have our z value of negative 1.48. We still need to figure out what x value goes with the negative 1.48. And that's where we use our x equals z times the standard deviation plus the mean formula. Z, we just found out, was negative 1.48. The standard deviation we know is 4 months plus the mean of 30 months. When we do this on our calculator, we end up getting 24.08 months. If they have a guarantee of 24.08 months, they'll end up paying out on about 7% of their guarantees, and the other 93% will survive the guarantee period. That's how we can use the inverse normal distribution function. So hopefully this video is helpful for you as you find probabilities of various applications under any normal curve. Good luck to you as you continue to practice with these.